Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of TC Talk. Back today with another video. And in today's video, we're going to be showing you our road to nationals katsu list. This is a list I will be taking as of the time you're watching this today uh, to my road to nationals event at the end games in Charlottesville, Virginia. Shout out to the end games. Great LGS. Um, yeah, I ended up pivoting to katsu <laughs> the night before. Uh, right now, it's the night before the event. Uh, but yeah. I'll talk about why in a second. I'll give you a little rundown on my list, some of the choices I made. There's no Art of War in this list. I'm finally running the pouncing links. Like This is a lot different than the list I'm used to, but it's a list I've been messing with for the past week or two, and I feel pretty confident about. But we'll get right into it. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hopefully, you enjoy your stay. Feel free to check out my other content. I do a lot of Flesh and Blood content here, as well as some Alpha Clash stuff. If you're a long standing supporter, thank you so much, as always. We'll get right into it. Check out the Discord down below. Check out the channel membership, all that good stuff. But I'm just really excited to talk about the list. So what has changed? We're going to talk about the elephant in the room. Razor versus Art of War. So I'll give a little preamble to this. Road to Nationals is a little bit different than like a calling or, you know, a pro tour or nationals or whatever, right? Road to Nationals is you can kind of gauge what the meta is, especially if there's been one or two road to nationals before you. And I can tell you right now, our meta is pretty diverse for the most part. Looking at this here, there was a road to nationals today about an hour, hour away. Um, and excuse me. And the top eight, if I can read it off to you all really fast, was, and this is from one to eight seed, Dromai, Teklavosin, Kasai, KO, Max, Uziri, Bravo, and then another Kasai. Seven different heroes in the top eight. Very, very diverse meta. But from what I heard, there was a good amount of Guardian in general, good amount of Jermai, um, and then Kasai, right? So, which is uh, the obvious stuff. So with Arachne, I really enjoy Arachne. Arachne is my favorite hero to play in the game. Um, it is. It's by, by far my favorite hero. But I don't like not enjoy playing Katsu. Um, and for me... This might be my only road to nationals I go to, and I feel very confident into the meta. Verse, Vice, except for Victor, which is really, I've finally gotten the matchup to being like 50 50 into Victor, a little bit less. It's like maybe 40 60. Um, except for Victor, I feel really good. I feel fine in the Bravo. I really do, especially with this list. I'm um, not saying it's favor by any means, but I think it's as close to 50 50 as it's ever been. Um, it's close to getting to 50 50. I feel good in the Dromai. Um, I feel good into Kasai. Kasai is a slugfest. It's close every single game, but I feel good into it. Um, and I feel good in a brute in general. Like I really do. Leviah has to really high roll. KO, I feel like I can race um, and stuff like that. So with Katsu, I made a couple changes. So as you can see in the equipment suite, a couple notes. One, we're finally running Mask of the Pouncing Links. I'll talk about the Pouncing Links package down here here in a second, but we're finally running this card. It's just needed in a Victor. It's kind of needed in a Kasai as well. He just don't have a choice. Like you have to do this stuff. Um, the good thing about Katsu now with the with the bonds line is like every card that Katsu plays that has go again or a chance to have go again is a non hit, right? Katsu pretty much every card Katsu plays now because of these cards is a non hit. So you can run pouncing links a lot easier. I've never been on pouncing links before. I finally just got on it these past few weeks and I've been enjoying it. I will say it can get a little bit risky. In especially in the Kasai matchup specifically, um, to run Pouncing Links because it really, if you blow your load too early, you're literally just a shell of yourself, right? Because you don't have mass momentum, you don't have Pouncing Links, you're just hoping to God that you draw into natural combo lines or the potential to have natural combo lines. And really, if you don't do that, you just absolutely gas out as a katsu so you have to be this is a really risky card to run but i think it's necessary into some of those decks that are just never going to let you get mask of momentum off which i know i've never been on but i finally saw the light um i saw the balhar manila list and it really encouraged me to try like more yellows on these um it really encouraged me to try a pouncing links package so i ended up trying it and it's done really well for me so far the other thing is the chess piece i am not running tunic at all um heart and cross strap for me it's just a comfort thing I, I want to run this in every single matchup. I want to be able, in the fast matchups, it has obvious use case. It allows you to get your combo lines off quicker, more efficiently to be able to race. And But in slow matchups like Tunic, unless you're doing it off of like a spinning wheel kick for free or something or Descendant maybe, usually Tunic doesn't really do a whole lot, at least for me. I mean, yes, there's certain use cases, but there's nothing better than, you know, um, 
getting four reds, like getting a, a surging descendant bonds and like a hundred wins and just being able to pop this thing and go right on a situation where normally at best off tunic, you'd have to pitch your hundred wins to play surging, but now you can't discard at all, which is still good, but not as good. This just, it's a get out of jail free card in a slow matchups. And like, I always point back to my calling Dallas game against Cody Williams, where there was one play where I got, two cards discarded from hand off a terrace under the only reason I was able to keep even reasonable tempo was because I had this card because I was able to pop it play surging and a whelming and then threaten nine damage with a draw and Cody was forced to respect by whelming right so without that I probably lose that game because I literally wouldn't have had a hand I would have had to like arsenal the surging and hope the guy doesn't crush me so because of that I just I never need to run tunic that's just how I'm going to do things um as far as AB1, there's one very good Kano player in our local area. I'm just hoping to God I don't get matched up with him. That's pretty much it. <laughs> um, I'm not I'm not teching for Kano, really, because I, I know in this whole area, unless someone out of the blue comes out, there's only one Kano that I have to worry about. So there's that. As far as the list itself, it's pretty standard. We'll talk about the elephant in the room. There's no Art of War. Razor, for me, there's several reasons. One, Anyone who's watched my channel for more than two videos knows I am not an Art of War Katsu gamer. I know Art of War has done great. There's literally been a top eight world's Katsu list with Art of War in it, right? So I'm not saying the card is bad. It's just not how I prefer to play. In this meta, I've had several... You can't take a turn off, and you have to have very consistent and constant pressure, even in the slow matchups, right? You really do. And Art of War, because of the value blocks, because of the new Guardian arm piece, because of uh, Kasai's ability to block over by one without even breathing, like all this stuff, right? Art of War has become less and less impactful for me, except for like those really big pop-off perfect turn plays off Tunic or whatever, right? Other than that, Art of War clunks my hand more than it doesn't. And even when I arsenal it, it just feels bad most of the time to play. It really does. So Razor has been amazing for me. I've loved it, and specifically in the Guardian matchup, to be able to guarantee an on-hit has been insane. Um, being able to, like, Razor Whelmings and 100 wins and Descendants and even Dishonor a couple times on people is just super, super nice. Um, and late game, they have to respect you so much more. I'm just back on Razor. I did well with it, the Dallas calling, and I'm going to try to do well with it tomorrow. We're still on the 600 wins package. We went down. We went to three bonds and three descendant, like most of the lists you're seeing. Um, after seeing the Manila list, I was like, you know what? I gotta bite the bullet. I gotta try this this out, swallow my pride a little bit, and do it. Um, and it's felt great. It's been really good. Um, spinning wheel kick came in place for the leg tap line. Sorry, y'all. I love the leg tap line. I still think it's amazing. But with ancestral harmony, spinning wheel kick's kind of where you need to be. And then we have the normal whelming surging package. I am on two McGinchy. Um, I'm. I'm enjoying the Lord of Wind line late game against Guardian after you've punched through all the armor. You know, you're both down to 20, 30 sub cards. Being able to play a McGinchy line and go get targets back in grave is super, super nice. At worst, it's a one for four block three. That helps you close out games off Razor. Again, super nice. And then the blue base is pretty standard. Um, we're only at two Fluster Fists. We had to make room. Uh, for the good cheese. We're at three Ancestral Harmony. This card is not as good as it, I thought it was going to be when it was released. If anyone follows my Twitter, you know I was going nuts about this card. Um, but it's still been very nice. There was one game specifically on a KO where I had this in hand um, along with one other blue and a hundred wins. And then I had a Whelming and Arsenal. I played Ancestral Harmony. I whiffed. I didn't get a card, but I was able to go Kadachi, Kadachi, hundred wins for four, uh, whelming for four when they were at one life and just get over the top, right? So um, it has some good niche cases. And then in other cases, yeah, it really does net you a whole card and gives you like plus four, plus five value, right? Even more. So it definitely has some possibilities there. But the list has been really solid. Um, in the sideboard, we had the Lynx package, one Blue Bonds of Ancestry, two Tenacity, one Salt. This originally was three tenacity, but I did notice sometimes in the Bravo matchup or even in the Kasai matchup when they get copper and they're wanting to play a blood turn, they just won't block you, right? Or they might try to block one attack, but after that, they just let you like string together bonds and stuff. So being able to activate links and go get salt instead of tenacity on turns where maybe they try to block out one big on hit and that's it felt really nice. For DREX, I don't have Flick Flack in the list. I have Sync below. Um, the meta just calls for it for me right now. There's more decks where I care about sinking cards and fixing my hand 
than I do value blocking. Um, so that's just how that is. Two reinforced line for Guardian for the most part, right? And even Kasai, and then three Command and Conquer. Um, but the list has been doing okay. Obviously, I did really a lot of testing in January, did really well with it, kind of dropped off early February, and then recently came back to it uh, mid-February this past week. So really excited about the list, really excited to see what it does. Again, you'll be watching this as I'm, like, on my way to my RTM. Um, so I'll definitely give you updates during the event. We're going to be doing some – me and Reagan are going to be doing some YouTube shorts. We're going to be doing some fun content for you all, vlogging it a little bit. And then whether I go 0-5 in my Swiss rounds or I go 8-0, perfect, win the whole thing, I will give you my feedback on what I did, how I felt, how the cards felt, how the matchups were, and things like that. But hopefully you guys have a good rest of your week. Hopefully you're staying safe and you have good luck on your RTNs. Really excited to see how RTN season shapes up. Like I said, the one that was two hours north of us today or hour north uh, had seven heroes in the top eight, including a two-seed Teclavossen. And this is a good area. Like Mara Forest and their team are in Richmond. Uh, Merrick Kemp lives here locally uh, near me. Uh, there's a lot of really talented players. So it's not, you know, just some crazy Wild West stuff. Uh, people are doing some really cool things. So very excited to see how I'll do today at the time you're watching this. Um, I'll keep you all updated. But, yeah, hopefully I'll stay safe. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to leave a like, comment, or subscribe, or support the channel via membership, feel free to do so. If not, it's totally fine. Go to another creator, do it for them so we can get more people seeing this game. And yeah, I'll see you all next time on TCG Talk. Thank you all so much.